Hi everybody, myself and John are back for more of the West Germans for Team Yankee. Yep. We're going to be checking out... The big box. The big box. And you just hurt my ears editing. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'll okay. do it again. So, uh, if you haven't seen it already, we have done a, a good half hour chat on the, the book for the West Germans, talking about what we would build for an army. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't want to follow our crazy plan, this is your option. So this is the West German starter force. Panzer, yeah. Pa Panzer, oh uh, no. <laughs> Panzer auf Karung. Auf Karung. Klarungs? Klarung? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's there. It's a company, tank company. Yep, and in this box we're getting two of the new kits mm -hmm. because they're the two new plastic kits. The other two kits that are coming out are the resin metal hybrid kits. Uh, so, okay, so everything in this box plastic, yes? Yes, this is full plastic and okay. all, all good and all happy. Okay. So what we're getting, uh, do, 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 we're getting two of the attack helicopters. Okay. We're getting two tornadoes, which are also plastic now, which mm -hmm. is great. We're getting four of the martyrs, which were previously hybrid kits, but are now plastic. Okay. One M113, which mm -hmm. is going to be used as your artillery observation post. Mm -hmm. Four, three M109 self-propelled guns. Okay. As well as two Leopard 2s, which are your standard Leopard 2s. Mm -hmm. And three Leopard 2 A5s, which are your new boys on okay. the street. So, plenty in the box, plenty of options to play with. Yes. Let's dig straight into it. So... Most, make, make them wait for the A5, Okay, but let's have a look at the other stuff. Right, so most of this you're going to be familiar with if you've collected West Germans before. If you haven't, great. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with the old Leopard, or the, the other, the standard The Leopard, uh, leopard. Classic. Yep, the Leopard Classic. Classic Coke. So, this is everything you need to build your Leopard 2, mm -hmm. uh, with the good old traditional boxy turret. Yeah. Your upper hull, lower hull, blah 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 you know what most of these parts are now on a tank. Uh, uh, honestly, I would probably still get it wrong, which is why I'm letting you do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we have all the options there to build your standard Leopard 2 because there's no frills, there's no fancy options or anything with it this It is thing. tank. It goes vroom vroom and boom boom. It is German tank. It basically blitzes. Yes. It, it kriegs everywhere, So, <laughs> as, as a good German tank should. So, as always, details in these plastic kits are ever increasing, mm -hmm. getting better. When the Leopard 2 first came out, it was one of the finest the Battlefront had done. We're going to see if uh, the 2A5 has superseded that in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. I know that Challenger is a really damn good kit as well. So yeah, no, I, I do remember whenever Battlefront first moved to plastic, some of the kits were quite challenging. So if, if you've been waiting to come back and try out some of the plastics from Battlefront, they are incredible now. If you're a Soviet collector and you like T72, yeah, I, you have my sympathy. It was why, one because of, why would you like T seventy two? It was one of the first plastic, one of the first plastic kits they did for Team Yankee, I believe, when it first came out, yeah. and uh, alongside the M one Abrams, and it wasn't great. See, the it, one I'll always remember is the old uh, the Sherman kit they did whenever they first first moved to plastics, and it had some issues. Oh, the, like the starter kit Sherman that needed a vice to hold the sides together. Yeah, yeah, that, that is no that. longer an issue. They've learned from that. Uh, so from Leopard 2, let's go on to some aircraft. Let's start right. with the little helicopter. Okay. I'm um, going to be nosy. Yeah, you could be nosy. So this is your little, um, pa, your PA. A PA? <laughs> your PA. P-A-H. It's your, your little attack helicopter. It's got some rocket pods on there. I believe it's it's toes or something like that. It's anti-tank missiles that it okay. has. So what, does it just fly through the air going? Pa, 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 it's pa, just, pa, 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 pa. yeah, it's just a little egg-shaped ball of anti-tank destruction. Mm. That's that's the way, the best way I like to describe mm -hmm. it. So, so what have we got on the sprue there? Well, you've got two halves of a helicopter. You've got the front of a helicopter. You've got some rotor blades. You've got some skids. You've got the tail. You've got the rotor housing. You've got the rockets. I do believe on this sprue there is a helicopter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been too long, man. <laughs> I've missed this, and I hope everybody out there has missed this. So I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep teasing the non-new plastic stuff. Yep. Uh, so this is onto your M109, uh -huh. which is your your big howitzer, mm -hmm. which has several guns on it. It's got the longer one, the shorter one, which a lot of the, the West Germans seem to favour. I don't know why, because um, the long barrels always look better. You've got a little 50 cal there if you feel like you need it. Mm -hmm. You've got the back of your hull, top of your hull, bottom of your hull, your two tracks and sides. You've got the really big, chunky turret 
because you need a big chunky turret when you have a big chunky gun. And big chunky shells. Yeah, and big chunky shells. It's a 155 howitzer, like these are not small rounds. Yeah. And um, they're two part ammunition or three part ammunition, so there's a lot of work that goes into yeah. loading these damn things. I remember seeing something similar to this that had an autoloader. Uh, I remember you showed me the video. Uh, there's a couple that have autoloaders now. Not this one, I'm assuming? No. Okay. No, no, so there, no. there is, unfortunately, a guy in the back of that having to hump that into the gun. Uh, or three. Yeah. <laughs> there's, these, these are it's basically a, a tank with an artillery crew riding in it as well. Yeah. So that's, that's, it is that's a pretty Paladin. Kit. It is a pretty kit. And I do like that they do the pre-coloured plastics. Yeah, well, this is this is the color of plastic that the the Americans go for because this is a a, a multi faction vehicle. Mm. This will go with any of your your Western allies. Mm -hmm. So they they just went with the Yankee Green for this one, and yeah. it's fine. That doesn't bother me whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that we have in Yankee Green mm -hmm. is our tiny little aluminium box. Oh, uh, uh, the M one one three. Our M one one three. I find it kind of cute that they've put the little firewall in here for the the driving compartment or the engine compartment. Mm -hmm. um, so the wee driver sits there and you've got actual space in here. You have actual space in here because you have two different types of top plate. You've got this one which is all open, which is for if you're taking a, um, a mortar team or anything like that in it because you can mount mortars in the back of these things uh -huh. if you're running them in your American list and you want some mortars. Uh, there's a few other options in here which won't bother you as a West German player because um, you're not going to be concerned about an M19 grenade launcher because you don't want your observation post being able to shoot this thing because then you've done something wrong. Uh, got some machine gun bits and bobs and really you're just building this as a bog standard M113. So um, just something for your commander to sit in and go go shoot them there that way? Just your, your artillery observer. Ah, uh, okay. So this is a vehicle entirely devoted to making so sure that the artillery... Helps this. Yeah. Got it. You're making sure that, that that observation post is letting you range in easier. Mm -hmm. He's letting you... He's letting the artillery know what's ahead of him, so he's able to say, you're, you're targeting tanks, mm -hmm. you're targeting armor, you're targeting infantry. They'll be able to change and switch their rounds mm -hmm. and do whatever they need to do back then. I'm not an artilleryman at heart, so <laughs> when I hear stuff like supercharge, I'm like, that sounds awesome, but I have no idea what it does. No, you see, you probably hear that and think, oh, so the tank's going forward in a supercharge. Close enough. <laughs> All right. First new plastic kit. Uh -huh. This is our martyr. And it is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. This is a very easy kit to put together. In fact, so easy. The one I have built and primed, I didn't even look at the instructions mm. because it's self-explanatory. Side, side, top, bottom, back, turret, turret, sure, side so plate, side plate, gun, mm. you know, hatch, missile launcher. You're, you're grand. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's one thing you'll find with a lot of the battlefront kits, the, the actual breakdown they do on the kit is very similar across most vehicles. It's it, it has become a lot more intuitive lately. Even mm -hmm. the the Soviet T80 kit is fairly intuitive. There's a couple of points mm -hmm. on it where you do need to reference mm -hmm. the, the instructions because yeah, I did if, not if know where built, the friggin' snorkel went. If you have built <laughs> one of these, pretty much you can build one of these because it's it's a very similar breakdown. Whenever they're taking the model from CAD and breaking it down into the cast components, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And what they're doing is they're they're doing something that skill modelers hate but war gamers love. Mm. Scale modelers like the challenge of finding the parts and building the parts and ensuring they yeah. fit together correctly. Whereas, because you're doing this for a war game, it's mm. basically, I need to be able to build this as quick as possible because I probably have five or six others that I need to build as well for a particular unit. Yeah, and you and don't want to burn out on building one kit and then having one out of five built. Mm -hmm. Exactly, T72 and T55 kits, I'm looking at you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so that is the martyr. Yeah. That is your IFV. Mm -hmm. because we're into the realm of infantry fighting vehicles, which I love. The details on this are super crisp. They are very tidy. Uh, and then we're going to get on to... Not the big one yet. <laughs> There's one more. So this is our Tornado. Yeah. And I have to move it that way. Sweet. So this isn't a Battlefront per se kit. This, All right. is, this is a licensed kit. I believe it's, um, is it Zevda or something like that that do this? It's a, it's a Russian company that produces these kits in mm -hmm. this scale. But this is where you're going to find a little bit more of a challenge because there's some parts in this you will need to refer to the instruction sheet, but that's fine. Wait, um, can you build this so the wings still move? You can build this so that you have, I'm going to say it technically, variable geometry in your wings. Yeah. Uh, because Tornado is a supersonic jet. Aye. 
but when it's not flying supersonic, you open the wings out and it can fly a bit slower. Yeah. So it's a bit less aerodynamic, which is a bit counterintuitive in a way. Yep. I know it's kind of childish, like super childish, but I like just being able to play with little moving parts on my miniature sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. It's something we all do. It is, yeah, to be fair, it is. But this is a good little kit. Take your time building these and they will work really well for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll move that one to the side. There is a couple of pieces that come in a little plastic baggie over there that allow you to put the rocket, the, the bomb pods and stuff onto yeah. them. And obviously you have your flight stands and stuff, but we all know what those look like. Yeah, and they're all nice. Okay, big baby. Big baby. Our Leopard 2 A5 sprues. And this, this is where I'd like to say the Battlefront have done a stellar job on this mm -hmm. uh, because the detail is beyond the likes of the Challenger, which I love, and the, the Merkava, which is a great kit, but it's a great kit, but it's a bit more challenging to build than what this is. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a kit you can more or less put together without needing your instructions. Uh, as long as you remember from your standard Leopard 2, these are turret sides and this is turret back. Everything else is pretty intuitive. Mm -hmm. well, you see, I'm, I'm actually just having a look at the the Leopard 2. Mm -hmm. And just having a look. And something I'm noticing, do you see the size difference in the turret? Oh yeah, because it's a huge turret. It's the same turret, but it has more on it. Yeah, and I mean, like, all of your Holland stuff is pretty much identical. Pretty much. There's a few differences towards the front of it, mm -hmm. uh, where they've they've changed a bit of the armor profile. Yeah, you've also got some of your uh, tools are on the back of yeah. the new one that aren't on the old one. No, no, they're the same. They're not the same layout, but they're the, there's the same tools are all present. Uh, okay. <laughs> Aye, it's the layout. It's, it's the same stuff, it's yeah. just the layout. So, yeah. so it's just minor changes. Yeah. Minor changes to a tank that was already good, but is, is being made better. Mm -hmm. There's also two varieties of gun down here. Now, these are L-somethings. L-somethings? L-somethings. Are you disappointed in yourself? Yes, <laughs> because I don't know, I don't remember the designation of caliber for the, the friggin' Rhine Metal 120. I'm sorry, I don't remember that particular detail. You can I, tell me in the comments. I hear the sound of furious typing to be the first. <laughs> so there's two versions of this gun. There's a short barrel and a longer barrel. Yeah. Can you imagine what the difference is between the two? One shoots a little bit stronger. One has a higher muzzle velocity, but yeah. it's not the A5. Right. So I have a feeling this is Battlefront future-proofing this kit a little bit. Like they did with the M1 when it came out, the American M1. Mm -hmm. It had the 120 millimeter barrel on it, right. even though there was no stats for it until it's the, the more recent book that came out. Yeah. Um, because everyone was just building them with the 120 on it anyway and going, it just looks better. Yeah. It's just a nicer looking tank. And I totally agree with you as much as I don't like Abrams anyway. <laughs> Um, it just, what is your, your obsession with hating Abrams? I just hate Abrams. For what? I just For hate why? It. I just hate it. You know, I've, I've <laughs> sat on an Abrams. I've been next to an Abrams. They are a pretty tank. Okay. I don't like American tank design. Okay. Ever since Sherman, they got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you mean after Sherman? <laughs> or even Sherman you don't like? Ooh. Probably. Are, are you about to start a war? Some Shermans... Did are horrendous. Are you about to accidentally a war? Some Shermans are horrendous. <laughs> All right. Which some? The early ones. <laughs> the cast hull. The, oh, the bubble ones? The cast hull. I have, I have three machine guns in the hull, two of them which can only be aimed by the driver. Awful. Wait, the driver had to aim at two machine guns? Yes. That's, that's before America caught on to the, maybe the cult of the machine gun isn't the way to go. And they decided to remove some of those. <laughs> You'll see the one in Bovington, it, it has the three okay. 30 cals in the front. It's okay. ridiculous. I mean, honestly, I think Russia was more of a, you know, the center for that with the amount of machine guns. Putting them on the backs of turrets. It worked. It worked better than the Americans because the Americans decided, hey, if there's a space that an infantryman might be able to approach this tank, we're not going to make a turret or a ball mount that sits there. We're just going to put another machine gun there. It's great. <laughs> right. It's how it works. Good job. <laughs> No more thankfully because we have the, the Leopard 2. Back yep. on back on point. Bring it in, Sean. Back on point. So Leopard 2 A5 is what we all know today as the modern Leopard because yeah. all Leopard variants since A5 have this particular pike nose on the turret. Mm -hmm. They've got the long 120 gun on them. They, they just, they look mean, they sound mean. Mm -hmm. And in the stats of this game, they are mean. And the gun stabilization can drive your beer on the end of the gun around the field. That's Please. one of my favorite yeah. leopard videos is just <laughs> yeah. this German guy pours a 
a big stein of beer, pops it on a little platform on the end of the gun, and it's just driving around. It's just like, he's fine, he's fine, I have my beer. I, I watched one at a, a display deliver a glass of wine to a lady. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I mean, if you're going to take your multi-million dollar tank and you're going to display it to the public, that's the, doing it with class. The, the best way to do it is to display it in a way that makes everyone go, oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. Because that's what the Germans have been doing with leopards. Yeah, but it's, it's, <laughs> that, it's the ridiculous pointlessness of, the, of doing that with it and just going, it's meanwhile, still cool, I love you for doing it. Meanwhile, there's someone in the Krauss Maffe research facility watching that video going, I spent three years doing the software for that gun stabilizer and that's what they're doing with it. You know, the See, really I, no, I have to wonder if the guy that designed it was sitting there going, look, lads, I'm going to do this so well, you're going to be able to do this with it. You're going to be able to put a glass of wine on it and deliver it to a lady. And everyone else is going, no, you're, 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 you're crazy. You're insane. I'll bet you 100 euro. And he's probably just sitting there going, give me my money. I mean, at the time, it was still Marx. Yeah, okay. I mean, maybe today you would say euro. Well, you this know, is the 80s we're still in. Yeah, but it depends on when the, the bet pays out. Good point. Because if, if they only did it when they were in euros, he would get paid in euros. And would they then have to work out the conversion rate? Conversion rate? I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> Unusual tangent aside. Yes. Leopard 2. Yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous kit. I want a closer look at this. Don't put it away from me. Okay. Sorry. Super uh, razor sharp detail on this. And so it looks like a fun kit to build. It is. It's a very easy kit to build because, again, it's one of those self, uh, those very intuitive kits mm -hmm. uh, that they've come out with. So we have some built ones, uh -huh. but we also have another vehicle that we need to show. Okay. Uh, which, uh, in the book chat, I was making a bit of a joke of, right? Yeah. I don't have the parts because it's a metal resin hybrid, but I have, you want I have the issue pictures, one. Yeah. It's it's a stug. It's a stug. Everything about it, it's a stug. I mean, if if Stug went and got like a makeover, you know, like on one of those crappy BBC Four TV shows. I mean, if I, I, I understand why it was tried. Mm. I understand what they were thinking of because the doctrine at the time, at least as far as the British are concerned, was in the event of a Soviet attack, the last thing you want to be doing is charging into it. So they were, yeah, they were you're thinking... You're looking at static defence. They were thinking of a static defence or a rolling defence. Yeah, you know, so or a retreating defence. Yeah, you would bound back every time you've, yeah. you've done a certain amount of damage or, or whatever. But for a metal resin hybrid model, that's a really nice kit and it's really tidy. A little bit of time with a file, and a little bit of time with some... Um, what, what did I use? A little bit of um, oven cleaner uh -huh. just to get the, the oily texture out of the mold mm -hmm. that's left over from the molding process. Get yeah. that off. Paint goes down as smooth as anything on it. So. See, do you want to know the funny thing? It's not an oily using the molds. It's well, talcum powder. Uh, the, no, there's definitely a, an, an oily substance That's on maybe those. just left over from the, the uh, curing uh, of the be, resin yeah, is what that oily curing. texture is. So it's, it's maybe just a last little bit that needs to cure out. Okay. Or a residue expert. from that curing process. <laughs> well, no, because I've we've been there. You remember we went to their casting oh, place. I didn't. You weren't there that day. No. Ah, oh, you missed out. That's fine. Okay. I'll go another time. Or no, was it? No, sorry, I'm thinking of a different company. Yeah, you are. Sorry. Yeah. Terrible. My bad. So yeah, Canon and Jagdpanzer. It's it's a a lovely metal resin hybrid kit. Mm. Don't be intimidated by it. Just clean the parts off, file them down before mm. you construct it, and then prime it once it's dry, and mm. you're fine. So on to the others. We'll do them. Martyr. Yeah. So the Martyr is a lovely little kit. Very boxy, but then that's what all um, IFVs were turning to. You know, they're, they're becoming this very sort of high profile in the hull, small turret kind of shape with a, a bit of a missile on top and a, a rapid fire cannon mm -hmm. as the support weapon. So it's, you could take this, a Bradley and a Warrior, put them side by side and go, they all do the same function and they all probably do it as equally as each other do it. Well, I mean, like, it, it boils down to, this thing is not meant to be fighting on front line. It is meant to get troops up there and lay down some covering fire while they get out and get into position. Yes and no. Okay. You can keep this thing up front with everything else, but you're definitely running in a supportive role. Mm. You're, you, if Once you've dropped your infantry, mm. you're not going away. You're staying with your infantry and giving them that continuous fire support. Yeah. Uh, in a lot of cases, these guys would be looking out for tanks and, and armoured vehicles because the cannon and the missile they have will help deal with that. Mm. Particularly if you're running with Milan teams or ATGM teams, mm -hmm. 
that need time to set up to fire at something, yeah. whereas this is a ready to fire mm -hmm. platform anyway. So. Yeah, well, I suppose the other thing is if things go sideways and your crew needs to get out of there, it needs to be able to sit in the area and defend itself until they would reboard and get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah, you can, you, I've seen these being used as, um, is it, was it recently in Syria, where they just use them to attack a certain building, then they, de they rebust the infantry and then just bug out. You, know, mm. they, you, do, you, you do your target attack and then you get out again. Mm. Uh, so IFVs have, they've proven themselves over the last 30 years as the way to go for infantry, mechanized infantry. Mm -hmm. Enough of these trucks and half tracks we've had in the past, you need a complete package to take to war now. So mm -hmm. IFV in general just seems to do a very good job of that. Yeah. Leopard. Yes, the big pretty one. The big pretty one. And I wish I'd brought a Leopard 2 with me because you could see the comparisons very clearly That's there. Right. take a photo. Yeah, yeah, we've got photos, it's fine. So in general, just a really nice kit, gorgeous detail on it. Once you've put some primer down on these things and you're ready to do that nightmarish um, NATO 3 tone camouflage, uh, yeah, you're, you're gonna be in pretty good stead. I already know Chris has said, I'm not doing NATO camouflage on mine. And I was like, right, what are you doing? He's like, I'm, I'm doing winter. And I was like, so you're gonna paint three tone first and then put a whitewash over it? <laughs> He's like, no, I'm just going to paint them green and put white over them. And I'm like, okay, good luck to you. Chris. Good job. <laughs> now, anyone who's coming to this, is it more restrictive for what they're going to be painting to bring these to table? Are there multiple like, color schemes you can put on a Leopard 2 5A? Here's, here's where we get to say World War III didn't happen, thankfully. Yeah. And we can play with it a little bit. This mm -hmm. is where you get a little bit of creative play going on because there are established color schemes out there, NATO 3 tone, mm. um, the, the British 2 tone and all that garbage. Um, yes, I'm calling them garbage because there's no other way to describe modern okay. camouflage schemes. They're garbage. They're not fun at all, is right. the way to put it. You mean like P-dot? They're boring. Um, <laughs> They're boring until you get to friggin' uh, Fleck Tarn that the Germans wore later on. Nightmare. All right, what year did Fleck Tarn come in? I don't know. Okay. Would it be feasible for me to say, you know what, I'm going to use that for my vehicles in this, and I'm just going to say, yeah, look, it's World War III, the, the, the camouflage had to evolve, and this is what they got. I would actually say that you... In a war situation, if you're rushing stuff to the front, mm. you may find the quality of the finish out of the factory not being what is usually promised by the mm -hmm. brochure. Mm -hmm. They're probably just going to paint it green and send it out. Because okay. a lot of Leopard 2s, standard Leopard 2s, didn't really go the three-tone route. You see a lot of them are just a plain green mm. and then just sent out that way and they, they used them that way. So yeah. you have a bit of play, but I remember the, the project we did for Oil War where I, I decided that because Iraq was hilariously allied with NATO at the time in the book, that I was gonna run some Leopard 2s as their support choice. Mm -hmm. And I just made up a desert scheme yeah. because it just, it was fun to do. So you can play with it. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't be harsh on anybody that decided not to do the known and used schemes. Well, it's, it's, it's the old argument that we always had whenever we do anything World War II, you like researching and finding a color scheme that you wanna do. Me, I like going a little bit more Hollywood with it. Where yeah. It I'm, looks like it's right, but it's not right. Both are fine. Yeah. Honestly, and World War Three games, I would be a lot looser with the rules mm -hmm. because I'm really not that bothered because it's a war that hasn't mm -hmm. happened. No. So you can play with it. A question. Yeah. So in the, the starter box, what all else do you get aside from the minis? What all else are we getting? We get a... A5, A5 rule book, yep. which we all know and love. Yep. We get a start here, which is all your instruction manuals, and you get a little bit of background on the vehicles that you're building. Mm -hmm. So you got your your 2A5, your 2, your Martyr, your OP M113, you've got your uh, M109, mm -hmm. your Tornado, and your PA. Okay. <laughs> your PA, and I'm going to continue calling it a PA from now on. So we get all this. And then I think here we get a 100 point list mm -hmm. that takes in everything that we have in the box. Mm -hmm. So you're getting the 100 points straight away. You can take this to any tournament or any gathering you want to do. Mm -hmm. And just a little bit of other stuff that shows um, a little bit of battlefield stuff. Yeah. And now I don't notice the, the PA has its own, or not the PA, the Tornado has its own instruction manual as well. It does because it's not a standard battlefront kit. 
Mm -hmm. They've had to make one up here because they've basically taken the standard kit and modified it to take this little extra pod of stuff and the, the flying base for it mm -hmm. as well. Plus, you know, you kind of need to see what way these wings go on. and Yeah, it just needs that little bit of a additional instruction. Yep. Plus, because you're, you're not building this as a scale model, which it originally is designed for, they're telling you to ignore the likes of the landing gear and stuff that comes with the kit. So they're just telling you just to put the... Ah, the covers on? Put the doors on, yeah. yeah. So. Okay, and I assume we get all of our transfers and cards and stuff? We get... We, we get reach trans out of shot. We, Yeah. Yeah, but I had to reach for it. I too. know. Yeah. So we get transfer sheets. Uh-huh. We get our stack cards, which have all the units that are in here. So mm -hmm. we got standard Leopard 2 and so on and so on. A few options, but nothing much yep. going on in there. Um, that's the quick reference for your movement orders and such like that. Mm -hmm. We then get the uh, crew figures for any of the vehicles, plus the two bomb pods for the tornadoes, as well as the magnets that you need, uh, or the optional magnets for the flying stands. See, I, I like using the magnets for both the flying stands and for the turrets where I can. I, just, I, I don't know, I like it more than just putting the peg in. I would. I don't mind the peg on the vehicles. I do want on the helicopters to always have a magnet on the rotors mm. because you can't really storage transport. for that. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, you can't transport these or store them yeah. away that easily. And I mean, like even on the actual stand itself, because some of the miniatures, if you don't like do it right or you mess it up, the magnet will hold it far firmer than just yeah. a friction hold. Absolutely. Um, apart from that, you just everything else is just multiples of what we've already discussed. So, mm -hmm. another fine addition to the uh, World War Three lineup. Mm -hmm. uh, some great new models in there. I'm looking forward to painting a Leopard 2 because it's a Leopard 2. Yeah. <laughs> um, heck, I might even go as far as maybe I'll paint up a tornado or something at some point. Mm -hmm. You never know. Yeah. You can You can tell me what you want me to do. Mm. All right, well, if that's everything in the box, uh, the only thing left to do is to pass it out to everybody out there on the internet to say, uh, do you like this starter set? Uh, what are you excited to play with from the starter set? Is it one that you would actually take to a tournament and think you could have fun with? Because I'm always curious about what a company thinks a good starter set is and yep. what a good starting list is yep. versus what people are building you know, with all of the other established factions that have had time to bet in. Yep. Uh, myself and John will move on here. Get those comments in. We will see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.